YouTube. Welcome to the second part of the video, how to start your own digital marketing agency in 2022 and 2023. In the first part of the video, which we posted yesterday, we talked about a few different things. The first thing was why a marketing agency is the perfect business to start in, in this current day, because there's just so many beneficial aspects to a marketing agency that you don't get with many other business models. So we talked about that in the last video, and we also talked about the roadmap of how you can begin starting your own agency. So the first step of that process was to find a niche. And if you want more details on that step, then again, watch the first video right up here. But anyways, the second step of that process is to begin learning the skill set needed to deliver quality results to clients within that specific market. Now, the third step of the process, which is what we're going to start with in this video, is to begin reaching out to potential customers and people who could become your clients in the future. And this is really where the rubber hits the road in terms of getting your agency off the ground because without reaching out to prospects and finding customers, you aren't ever going to make a penny. You, you won't. So you have to begin prospecting. And that is what we're going to talk about in this video. You can spend years learning the skills and mastering the process of how to build a website and how to run ads and everything else. But if you never actually reach out to clients, then you're not going to grow and you're not going to achieve financial freedom. This is the most important step. If you skip this, everything else is worthless. Okay, so let's get right on into it right now. All right, digital marketers. So in this step of the process, which is prospecting, the goal is to reach out to people who fit your target client base and essentially just convince them to become your clients. That's the overall summary of this process. But that breaks down into four main steps. So the first step of that process is to find your target client base. The second step of that process is to reach out to them and to try to set up a meeting or an appointment so that you can pitch your services to them. The third step of that process is to actually have that meeting and show them what you can do for them. And the fourth step of this process is to close the deal and have them sign on as a client. But anyways, let's jump into each of those steps of this process more in detail. So like I said a minute ago, the first step of this process is to reach out to your target client base. And what that means is we, we reach out to them through email, through social media, will you cold call them? You need to decide on what specific platform you're going to use to reach out to them. And the thing about it is that any of these can be effective. I've gotten clients through cold emailing. I've gotten clients through cold calling. I've gotten clients through referrals. There, there are so many different options for acquiring new clients. But what you need to do is initially, I would highly suggest trying out all of those options. And then over time, you'll begin to notice what works best for you. Some people are great at cold calling. Some people aren't. Some people are great at emailing. Some people are not. So just find out which one works best for you and, and which one is producing the best results within your specific niche. And then focus on that one particular outreach method. But again, initially go with many different outreach methods to see what works best for you. All right, so the second step of the prospecting process is to actually begin reaching out to those potential clients. And what you need to realize here is that you just need to share your value genuinely with them. You, you don't want to come across as being spammy or you don't want to sound like a scam or a salesperson. Just be honest with them about what you are trying to provide for them and go from there. And you need to realize this. You are going to get rejected. You are going to have the phone hung up on your face. You are going to have people who say, no, they don't want your service. It, it, it's, it's a part of this business. So you need to accept that and you need to embrace it. As you go through it, take the no's as a good thing, because the more no's you get, the closer you get to a yes. And there's literally so many different ways and different scripts for how to go about cold emailing and cold calling and any of those types of prospecting things. So I'm not going to provide any specific script for doing that because I want you to go out and use something that that is authentic to you. 
And again, you're going to get rejected, but then you're going to adjust your approach and you're going to keep on adjusting and modifying your approach over time. And through that process, that incremental process of gradual growth, you are going to see what works best for you, what script works best for you, what approach works best for you, what platform works best for you. And it would be almost inauthentic for me to provide a specific script because, again, everyone's business is different. Everyone's approach is different. So you need to try different methods of approaching them and see what works best for you. Now, if you guys really, really want a video about the scripts that I have used to get clients in the past and I can make that video in the future, um, just leave a comment down below. But as for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is because I really want you to get out there and try your own approach and adjust that and modify it over time for your own growth and for your own success. And again, there are so many different methods of reaching out to your potential clients. You can code call them. You could code email them. You can join Facebook groups that are related to your niche. You can DM them on Instagram. You can go to their website and submit a contact us form. You can reach out to your friends and family and people in your circle who have their own businesses. You can go to local industry groups and referral groups. But the main point is that you need to reach out to people. You need to put yourself out there. It's not going to be comfortable at first. It is not going to be comfortable at first. But as you continue to do that, you will begin to see results and you'll get clients and you'll realize that it's no big deal. And you'll also realize that that discomfort is actually a sign of growth and a sign of progress. It's a sign that you're moving in the right direction. Most people in the digital marketing agency space fail because they don't prospect hard enough. They don't reach out to enough potential clients. And because of that, they have no clients. This is always the key issue existing within most agencies. It, this is almost always the main issue. When you reach out to more potential clients, that solves every issue in the business. And the golden rule of prospecting is very simple. The more people you reach out to, the more you will earn. There is a direct correlation between your income and the amount of people you reach out to. So if you want to grow your agency quickly, reach out to more people who fit into your target client base. If you want to take years to grow, don't reach out to anyone. Just sit at home all day studying and building your own website and doing these mindless things that aren't actually progressing your business forward, but they look nice on paper. Don't be mindlessly productive. Focus on effectiveness, not productivity. In other words, focus on doing things that are actually advancing your business. And prospecting is the number one thing you can do to advance your business. And before we move on to the next step, I also want you to realize this. The first client is always the hardest. As soon as you get your first client under your belt, everything else becomes easier. This entire process begins to seem real and seem possible as soon as you have your first client on your on your team. So please realize that it's not going to be easy at first and you're going to struggle to get your first client. But once you have that, you're going to be more confident and you're going to feel more assured in the fact that you can actually make a living out of this. So just keep on pushing until you have that first client and it's going to pay off. It will. But anyways, like I said, the steps of the prospecting process are to find your potential clients, reach out to them, have a meeting to convince them to work with you, and then to close the deal and have them sign on as a full-time client. But anyways, let's move on to the next step of the digital marketing agency process, which is to deliver the services to your client. Okay, so step four of this process is to deliver the results and the service to your client. And what this consists of is doing exactly what you promised them when you signed them on as a client. So if you promised them that you would run ads for them, then run ads for them. If you promised them a website, then build a website. If you promised them that you would help them to rank in the search engines, then help them to rank in the search engines. And throughout this process, just be as, as honest and transparent with them as possible, but also be sure to maintain an ongoing stream of communication because that is one of the most important things when you have a client on your team. What you need to realize is that as the person who is actually doing the work, you will always be acutely aware of how much work and effort you're putting into the campaign. But the client has no way of seeing all of that. So it's easy for us as the workers to assume that 
you know, they're fully aware of how much work we're putting into their campaign and that they should appreciate that. That kind of stopped my own progress for a couple of years because I would always assume, hey, they know I'm putting in hard work. But it is your job to make them aware of all the work that you're putting in towards the campaign. So what that means is you should every week send them an update. Let them know what you've done in the past week to keep moving things forward. Let them know how things are progressing along. And as you keep on doing that, it lets them genuinely see that you care about their campaign and that you want them to grow. And that keeps them on board as a client for a long time, even if results don't immediately show up. So again, be sure to maintain very consistent lines of communication with your client where you're constantly reaching out to them at least at least once a week. But again, the main goal during this step is simply to provide the exact service that you promised them. And when you uphold what you promised them, that can lead to referrals in the future, which will further grow your business. Most of my clients have come through referrals from my early on clients. So again, try to give your absolute best foot forward with every single client you work with, because not only will that keep them on board for a longer time, but that will also have them refer people to you who will grow your business further. But anyways, that is the overview of the service delivery process. Let's move on to step five, which is to grow your business and make it more efficient. All right, guys. So now we are going to talk about step five of the agency process, which is simply to grow and optimize your business. And the first part of this is to simply rinse and repeat what you're already doing. So like I said earlier, the most difficult step of this process is simply to get your very first client. So after you have that first client on board, you need to look at what you did to get that client and repeat that on a massive scale. Literally do that exact same thing, but 10 exit. If it took you 100 phone calls to find that client, then make a thousand phone calls. If it took you 250 emails to, to get that first client, then send out 2,500 emails. If it took you 75 Instagram DMs, then send out 750 Instagram DMs. And as you do this, you will notice that increasing the numbers will increase the results. So again, what you want to do here is just simply focus on what worked and repeat that at a massive scale. And that will allow you to massively scale things up in a short amount of time. And during this same step, also be sure to cut out all the fat. Anything that did not help you to produce new clients, then remove it from your process. You need to almost consider yourself a scientist during this step. You're just constantly testing new hypotheses. Hypotheses. You're constantly testing new hypotheses and just trying to figure out which one fits, which one works correctly. And when you find one that works, you take that and you implement that on a massive scale. And it's it's a very iterative process. You're, you're never fully there. You, just, you keep on trying out new things and seeing what the results are and then keeping what works and getting rid of what doesn't work. And over time, that turns into massive, massive, massive improvements, huge improvements. So like I said, part one of the growth process is to rinse and repeat what is already working. But the second part is to systemize your processes. But what do I actually mean by that? Well, in your agency, you want to make things as efficient as possible. You don't want to have to constantly recreate the wheel. And the best way to do that is by identifying what processes you tend to repeat the most in your business. So for example, in my agency, every month I send out a monthly report. And whenever I have a new client, I have to build them a new website. So I've identified what processes I do quite often and I've made templates for those processes. So I have a template in place for my monthly reports and I have a template in place for my websites. And by using these templates, that has massively cut down the amount of time that I have to spend doing those specific tasks that I know are being repeated every single month. So for example, in the past, I might have taken, you know, four or five hours for a single monthly report. And now it takes me about 20 to 30 minutes to create a monthly report. So by identifying what specific tasks in your business you tend to repeat the most often and then making templates and making systems for those tasks, you are going to make yourself much more efficient and allow yourself to have more free time, but also allow yourself to bring on more clients more efficiently. So for this step, you simply need to identify what processes you tend to repeat the most in your business 
and then make templates and systems to handle those processes. And that leads us into the part three of this growth step, which is to bring on help and bring on virtual assistants. And one of the beautiful things about systemizing everything is that as soon as you have a template in place and a system in place, you don't need to do that work anymore. So now that we've talked about systemizing the processes in your business, that brings us perfectly into the next topic, which is to hire help and to bring on virtual assistants. And what you need to realize is that the best way to grow your business after you have some baseline income is to bring on additional help. And when you have a virtual assistant in place, that allows you to focus on more of the high level tasks in your business rather than the day to day, you know, random things that just keep popping up. The best way that I like to think about it is, is this. If you know that your time is worth $20 an hour, $30 an hour, $40 an hour or, or more, then why would you waste your time doing a task that you can literally hire someone overseas for $5 an hour to do? Why would you do that? And again, now that you have built those systems and templates for handling the tasks that you know are common in your business, you can take that same template and hand it off to a virtual assistant. And some of the best websites for finding virtual assistants are on upwork.com, fiverr.com, that's spelled F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And you can find freelancers on these websites from all across the world who can handle basic digital marketing tasks. So again, as your business grows and as you bring on more clients, it is going to be very important to bring on virtual assistants and people who can help you because you, you, you can't do everything. And if you try to be a one person team, you are going to not only limit your own growth, but you're going to drive yourself crazy. Hiring help and bringing on assistants is the way to go once you have some clients on board. And the final step of this growth process is to reach out to your current clients to refer people to you. And this is something that you should be doing often is simply encouraging your happy clients to refer their friends and their business partners over to you. This can literally be a game changer in your business. It can allow you to double or triple your clients like that. In my business, most of my clients have come from referrals. I would say 60% of my clients have come from referrals. So when you provide amazing work, you want to reach out to those happy customers and encourage them to tell their friends about you, tell their family about you, tell whoever they know that owns a business about you. And that will grow your business so effectively over time. And what you need to realize is that if you are cold calling businesses or cold emailing businesses, that puts you in a different frame compared to when you have businesses approaching you after being referred to you. When you cold call them or when you cold email them, you can still close the deal, but you come in from a, from a point of lower value. Whereas when they are referred to you, they already have established you in their mind as the expert, as the authority. So that makes the close so much easier. So again, be sure to ask for referrals from your past customers. But anyways, those are the five steps of the agency roadmap process. Uh, just to review them, once again, the first step is to figure out exactly what niche you're gonna be serving. The second step is to learn the skills so that you can properly provide a service to those clients. The third step is to begin prospecting. The fourth step is to actually deliver the service to those clients. And the fifth step is to continue growing and optimizing your business over time. But anyways, now that we have covered those five steps, let's talk about the next topic, which is how much startup capital do you need to actually successfully start in this business model? Okay, so let's talk about startup capital. And what you need to realize is that you don't need much capital to start in this digital marketing agency business model. You, you, you truly don't. You could easily get by with anywhere from $50 to $250 as startup capital for your business. And that simply consists of buying books and buying courses so that you can build a foundational knowledge base of the correct skills to succeed in this business model. You do not need a website to get started with an agency. I did not have a website for my first year after starting. You don't need business cards. I still don't have business cards. The only things that you really need to buy are courses and books. 
And I would personally recommend spending anywhere between $50 to $250 on courses and books because that will give you enough basic knowledge to understand the skill set required to succeed in this space and to begin producing results for your clients. Of course, you can also spend way more than that. When I got into this space, I bought a course for $6,000. Um, and that honestly saved me a couple of years, if I'm being completely honest, it, it definitely helped the process. But if you do decide to buy something more expensive, just be sure to properly vet it and be very careful because there are definitely scammers out there and they will take your money if you give it to them. So just be sure to thoroughly vet whoever you're buying a course from and make sure that they are the real legitimate deal before you buy anything from them. And the best ways to do that is to look at their online reviews, look at their lifestyle, try to reach out to people who have bought their course before to see what they thought of it. Just do everything you can to try to minimize your risk so that you can have a very firm idea of what you're getting yourself into before you actually buy that course. But anyways, like I said, you really don't need more than $50 to $250 in order to get started in this business model. You, you could even get by with zero because you can learn a lot on YouTube and from free Kindle books. Um, it's not gonna be quite as efficient and it might take a bit longer to learn, but you can absolutely learn everything you need for completely free. So the next question is how much can you actually earn from a marketing agency? And the truth of the matter is that that is a very tough question to answer because some people are making $10,000 within within 90 days and other people take a year and they're still making zero. So it, it, it really can vary quite a bit. And I'd be lying if I said otherwise. And anyone who says that you are guaranteed to make 10K in, in six months is lying to you. And I'm I'm not here to BS you. I wanna, I wanna show you the actual reality of the situation rather than just trying to feed you and hype you up and blah 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 no that, 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 that's not what i'm gonna do but with that being said and we already know that there's no way for me to perfectly predict what you're going to earn um but again with, with that being said what can i say is usually the average okay that's a better question so i've noticed that for the typical person who applies themselves fully to learning this they can learn enough skills to begin selling their their services within 30 to 90 days of beginning so again, if you begin studying the skill set today and learning how to run your own marketing agency, I genuinely believe that you can have your first client within 30 to 90 days. I, I genuinely know that. And in a year, I think that absolutely anyone in this space can be earning anywhere between $2,000 to $10,000. Absolutely anyone. And those, those are just average numbers. So those aren't the high end that is just an average. And I think that absolutely anyone in this space can do that if they put in the work. And within two years of beginning your agency, I think that absolutely anyone can be making anywhere from $5,000 per month to $25,000 per month. And again, that's just an average, but I don't think that $5,000 per month as a minimum is a difficult metric to achieve in the marketing agency space because I've seen I've seen guys earn 10 times more than that in the span of two years. So $5,000 a month is not overly difficult. And again, I'm not here to feed you bullshit. And if you've been in the agency space for a while and you keep seeing like all these videos of guys saying, oh, you'll earn 10K in 90 days and blah, say, blah, say, blah. Hearing me say that you'll only be earning 2K to 10K a month after your first year, that might be disappointing. But what you need to realize is that you have the potential to jump far beyond that. But I'm just saying $2,000 within the first year per month as a minimum, because I'd rather have you set more conservative expectations for yourself and not give up when you don't immediately see results compared to setting sky high expectations and quitting within weeks because you're not seeing the progress that you wanna see. It is so vitally important to have the correct mindset and the right expectations as you move into this. And what you also need to take into consideration is that the average U.S. income is, is way below the amounts that you can make in your own agency. So even if you spend two years completely dedicated to growing your marketing agency, and by the end of that, you're making, let's say, 
$6,000 per month after two years of hard work. And don't get me wrong, that was absolutely a sacrifice. But at that point in time, you are living life on your terms. You have complete control over your time and your income. And you are making more than the average American without a nine to five job on your terms. You can go travel. You can take care of your family. You can you can do whatever you want at that point in time. So again, it it's not a quick process and it takes a year or two to really see results. But once you get past that hump, once you get past that, life becomes so beautiful. So don't, when, when I say it takes a year or two years to fully see results, don't use that to, to stop yourself. Use that as motivation because most people... Most people won't do the work. They're, they're not going to push themselves because they don't want to wait a year or two to see results. But that's what it's going to take in any business model because 95% of businesses fail within five years. And that is not the case in the marketing space. I, I rarely see people who consistently put in the work in this space fail. It, it, it's, it's a rarity. So if you just put in the work for a short amount of time for for relatively speaking, for a short amount of time, for two years, three years. If you do that, you will see results. You will. So just trust yourself, trust the process, stay consistent, and watch your life change. So my throat is getting sore from all this talking, but I love you guys, so we're going to keep on treading on. I have a few more tips that I want to share in this video. These are some tips that I wish somebody had told me when I was first getting started in the digital marketing space. Um, they would have saved me a lot of time, a lot of energy, and I would have seen results so much quicker. So let's jump into those. And after that, we are going to end the video. But like I said, let's get right on into those tips. So the absolute biggest tip that I can offer you is do not waste your time on BS. Do not. There is so many random things in the digital marketing agency space that you could waste time on. You can waste time on setting up a website. You can waste time on building business cards. You can waste time setting up an LLC. There, there's so many things that, that you can do that seem productive that actually do nothing to increase your income. So what you want to focus on is exclusively focus on tasks that will bring you more income. So as you're first getting started, what that means is focus on learning the skill set because that's what's going to bring you closer to income. But once you have the skill set in place, your main and absolute focus needs to be on outreach. It needs to be on prospecting. It needs to be on getting new clients. Anything that is not directly related to bringing you more clients should not be your focus. It shouldn't. A website might make you look good down the line a little bit, but when you are first getting started, you do not need that. A corporation, an LLC, a business name for your company, that might help you down the line. But in most states, you do not need that to get started. You don't need the credentials. You don't need a degree. You don't need a certificate. You don't need any of these things to get started. You just need to learn the basic skill set and then begin outreach. There's There are so many agency owners out there who spend years and years on this stupid little rabbit hole, going in circles, just spinning their own wheels because they they continue just pursuing all this random bullshit, but they never pursue clients. What is going to move your business forward is pursuing clients. So what your focus needs to be is on emailing potential clients, cold calling potential clients, talking to clients in person, DMing them on Instagram, joining Facebook groups that are related to your niche. You want to put yourself into the correct spaces so that you can connect with potential clients. That is what is going to grow your business. And 80% of your focus during the early stages of your business needs to be on outreach. Nothing else. Nothing else. If you're not spending absolute minimum, absolute minimum two hours a day on reaching out to potential clients, then you are failing. You are failing. And that's absolute minimum. And when you do that, you will notice that your business grows very quickly. But if you spend, you know, only one hour a week doing outreach, then of course your business won't grow. 
I, I have talked to many different guys in this space who are trying to grow agencies. And that is the number one mistake is just not putting enough time into outreach. You need to reach out to more people. You need to. That's it. Now, the second tip that I want to share is that time will condense or expand based on how much time you give yourself to complete a task. And what I mean by that is think back to, to high school when you had a paper due. You might have an essay due in, uh, let, let's say it's due in a week. And somehow you spend that entire week putting that paper together. But on the other hand, if that paper was due in an hour or due tomorrow, you would find a way to complete it. So it's not about the difficulty of the task. It's about the deadline you set for yourself. And oftentimes what you will notice is that if you set strict time deadlines to complete a specific task, that you will complete that task and the quality of that task will be better than it would have otherwise been because you have a better intensity of focus and that carries over to a higher quality result. So what this means in the agency space is that if you want to maximize your efficiency as you are beginning this process is you need to set very tight deadlines for every single aspect of this business. So as you are trying to learn, set a very strict timeline for how much time you are going to give yourself to learn each specific thing. So if you're doing a, if you're reading a book, give yourself a very specific deadline of a day or two to read that book. If you're doing a course, give yourself a deadline of, you know, two, three days to go through that entire course. And as you do that, you will notice that things that you didn't even think were possible become completely possible when you give yourself a very strict an imminent deadline. Humans are amazing creatures. We are, we are powerful. We truly are. But oftentimes we are the main thing holding ourselves back. And when you get out of your own way, you can create much more results very efficiently and very effectively in a short amount of time. So again, as you're going through this process of starting your own agency, be sure to give yourself very strict and tight deadlines for every single aspect of your agency. And then go all in on each of those tasks and watch the amazing work that comes out of that. Okay, and tip number three, which is the final tip of this video. And I want you to take this one and put it deep within your heart because it's important. What you need to realize is that within one single year, within, within one year, your entire life can be completely transformed and you you are in complete control of that nobody else if you don't achieve what you want to achieve in a year that's your fault but if you do that is also your fault so please realize that within the digital marketing agency space you have the potential to create complete financial freedom within the span of a year you do anyone can do it it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of effort and a lot of discomfort and a lot of learning new skills. And it's not going to be easy. It is absolutely a process, but it's possible. And if you know that the lifestyle that you dream of living, a lifestyle of freedom, a life where you can take care of yourself and take care of your family and you can travel and you can focus on building genuine, deep connections in life and you can focus on your relationships and you can focus on just enjoying life. If that's what you want and you know that financial freedom is a heavy part of that, then why would you not go all in on pursuing something that you know is going to contribute to building your dream lifestyle? Why would you not go all in on that? And a couple of years back, I was in a position, like I said in my last video, I was in a position where I just was not doing well financially. And life is not all about money, but when you have your money in order, it makes things so much easier. And I I, I wasn't sure what I would be able to create with my agency when I got started. I, I didn't know that it would lead me where I am today. But I took that initial leap of faith and I and I jumped into it and I I leaned beyond my edge. <laughs> I leaned into my fears and it paid off. And now I'm living life on my own terms and I can I can travel and I can focus on my relationships and I can focus on 
doing what I want with my life and I can focus on building the life and not just focus on finances. And that's a very beautiful switch. And you can do that too. Anyone can do that. So I really want you to think about how your life can change and transform within the space of a year. And absolutely anyone can do it. I, I hate to keep saying that same thing, but absolutely anyone can do it. So please spend some time thinking about how your life will change when you have the resources to do what you want with your life and, and use that as motivation as you go about the process of building your agency. But anyways, I know you can do it and I know you will put in the work to do it. I know you will because you don't want to live an average lifestyle. Thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed this, continue on to the next video of this series, which talks more in depth about how to find the perfect niche for you and what to consider when choosing a niche. You can watch that right here. But anyways, Never forget that consistency creates kings. And if you are not consistent in life, then nothing is going to be complete. I'll see you next time.